Parenting is hard. Few of us feel up to the task. The world is shifting, quickly and dramatically. All of us feel the changes affecting our families. The stress and pressure can be intense. We are here to help sort the good and the bad, provide insight and bring hope. Welcome to Brilliantly Brave Parenting. We're so glad you stopped by. Hi, and welcome to season five of Brilliant Brave Parenting. Yes, I never thought getting that out. You know, I, I had a late lunch, and uh, I'm not sure it's done, you know? <laughs> Apparently not. Well, that's better than me. I didn't have lunch. So, um, suffering for Jesus. I'm suffering for Jesus. Always right. a martyr. Probably. I'm, yeah, not quite. I could I could do without a few meals. We well, that. I know you're a foodie, and our audience knows that. Um, you are a fantastic chef and an amazing cook, and the audience already knows that from past seasons. And if they've listened, they've they've heard me brag on your culinary skills. Well, thank you, Brad. But we've been doing something this season where we're asking each other very, you know, intimate, private questions about each other. You're making and it sound so much more scandalous than it is. I know. Last week, he asked me if I liked eggs. Um, so this week, I'm going to ask Robert a question. You have to pick from 1 to 25, and then it'll be totally arbitrary and not biased. Um, seven. Number seven. What's your favorite quote? Oh, my goodness. That's a hard one. Um, uh, I, I'm, da, I da, no. Da. That's not a quote. I have no idea. Sure you do. I, I, I don't, actually. I don't have a favorite quote. I, I, there's so many things that I want to say there, but um, I, I, I love the, the thing that pops into my mind most recently is I've gone through this book. I'm on the third time through the, the latest Bob Goff book, Bob Goff book, Everybody Always. And um, he talks about basically we are called as Christians to love everybody always, period. And I, I just think that I've worked through the book with my daughters um, and it's been, it's actually really helped shape some of the out, outlooks that we have as a family. And so I would have to say that that's, that's the most recent one that I've been holding on to. Everybody always love everybody always. That's awesome. Uh, that's a great quote. You did very well for being put on the spot. I, I give you kudos <laughs> for that. You. Uh, for those who are new to the podcast, Robert and I are the co-hosts. I'm a pastor. Robert is a author and pastor now. I am um, now. He is, uh, a part you of told a, me one day. I, I did, and I always dismissed you. I'm like, "There's not a chance." Yeah. I'm a music guy. So not only does he only wear black now, but uh, he is uh, he is really involved in pioneering a new ministry uh, called Solo Parent Society. Just real quick, because it's relevant mm -hmm. to this topic today. Mm -hmm. Tell our audience about what you're doing with Solo Parent Society. Uh, Solo Parent Society is um, built to to meet the needs. 34% of U.S. households are single parent homes and they're really struggling. I was a single dad for eight and a half years raising three girls. And from a faith perspective, there weren't any resources. There, there wasn't a whole lot of support for the church. So Solo Parent Society, we start uh, community groups in churches. We provide resources like podcasts and books, and we provide relief and support to single parents. We're a nonprofit. And um, I could not be more thrilled about what I get the opportunity to do for single parents. Yeah. And as your friend in uh, cohort, I can tell our audience that you are perfectly suited for that role and uh, a wise and capable leader for uh, single parents. Thank so, you. Yeah. I'm Which excited. is a great segue to, to our guest today. And I know you can introduce her, but I, she's been in the music business for a long time, as was I, and um, has had some experience in the solo parent world. And so I'm, I'm really excited to get into this interview. Yeah. And our guest today is Nikki Leonte Edgar. She was a teen sensation. I remember her uh, as a musician in Christian music. I remember hearing about her. She came her. out of the blue. It was crazy. Yeah. And she's gone on uh, to do a lot of stuff in Hollywood. She's mm -hmm. been involved as a writer. She's been in uh, movies and television. She's, uh, she's been involved with people like Carrie Underwood, Kelly Clarkson. CeeLo Green, Demi Lovato. I mean, she's she's been out there and had some success, but uh, she's our guest today, and we want to welcome her to Bring Brave Parenting. Hello. Hey there. It's so good to have you here. Thanks for having me. We are, uh, we talked a little bit before we went on air, and I, I mean, it. it's really refreshing to have uh, a guest who's had success and is a parent 
and is now sort of over themselves and into the role that God's given them as an influencer. And it was very clear to me as we talked that you you are not in for the simple fix. You want real life issue stuff. And you've written yeah. a book. Tell us about your book and how that came to be. Um, this book was birthed out of necessity for me, I think, especially what you guys were just talking about when I had my daughter 18 years ago and being, um, you know, a faith-based person, I couldn't find resources that were relatable to me in that time. There wasn't as much out there and there still isn't tons when it comes to, you know, struggling with your life and faith and, and walking through as a, a Christian parent, there's, there's not as many resources as I would, I would like to see out there in the world for people that are, you know, parenting solo. So I, um, I had a need to, you know, I wanted to relate to someone when I was, you know, a teen mom and going through it. I just didn't have that, that friend to be like, Hey, I'm on the other side and, and cheering me on to kind of help me get there. It felt, it felt isolated and, and lonely. And so, a few years back, I just finally just went ahead and started writing through my thoughts and and got this book done and just, you know, was hoping that there would be some other parents out there who had gone through some of the same struggles and that I could kind of be an encourager to that it's you're going to you're going to get through it in one piece. That's an awesome. encouraging thing. Just just for our listeners to know, the name of her book is All Things Beautiful. 31 Devotions for Single Moms. Robert, you've been in this world. Yeah. Speak to that. I I applaud you so much for doing this because you're exactly right. There isn't a lot of resource out there. And um, as you well know, and um, a lot of our listeners may not be single parents, but the odds of you knowing a single parent are ginormous. Um, I don't think there's anybody listening that doesn't in some way intersect the life of a single parent. And mm. um, we all know them. What we don't know is how, how much they're struggling and um, not just struggling from a standpoint of financial or whatever, but exactly what you just described, Nikki, and that is feeling completely alone and isolated, forgotten, kind of in the penalty zone. And yeah. um, the, the remarkable thing, at least in my story was that's that's when an awakening happened in my life. And um, had the bottom not dropped out, I don't know that I would have been forced to kind of face myself and come to know my father more intimately. And so um, two things. First of all, I want to encourage those listeners that are, that are not single parents to not tune out because there's something to learn here, not only in, in what Nikki's story is, but also in the people that are around you that you really need to do simple things to reach out and help them. But also, yeah. I, I want to I want to explore a little bit the things that you kind of encountered as a single mom, um, just as a way of kind of what what God taught you in that season, as well as what can we as people and I'm married now, as are you, um, what can people in nuclear families realize about single parents, and what are some things that we can do to help them? Yeah. Um, well, to to start off, I think. You know, you were saying uh, about isolation and, and being alone and things. I think that oftentimes people people don't know how to help, but there's so many generous, awesome people out there that just are waiting for an opportunity to be of help to someone. They just don't know how to reach out. And, you know, even in, in being in the single parent zone when I was, like, I didn't know how to ask for help. Right. And I think as people in nuclear families, people who are on the other side are, are not struggling with um, being a single parent, you know, it's just like m making the assumption, hey, they need help. You know, if you see a single mom, single dad, most likely there's there's a way that we can help them um, and, and help, you know, lighten the load a little bit and just kind of assuming that we can be of assistance in some way in someone's life. And I think, um, for myself, as I was, you know, going through it, I just didn't want to burden anybody. Right. But I could, I could have really used a few hours during the day, maybe to get some stuff done or, you know, there was always, there was always a, a practical need that could have been filled. Um, yeah, but and it's hard. I was a single parent cause you did, you're already feeling kind of ashamed. Um, yes. Whether you know whether you did something to cause being a single parent or it was done, it doesn't really matter. The point is that we feel yeah. like failures to a certain extent, 
And oh, exactly. And idea- I think that even in the in the church and and where I come from in kind of church world, ministry world, that you know, the lack of resources kind of was because of maybe some stigmas around mm-hmm. being a single parent or the sins that led you to there or the judgments within that. So, you know, even in, in some av- in some churches and things that I was in back in the day, there wasn't an addressing of the situation due to the fact that it was it was kind of um a sinful sounding or there was yeah. the stigma around it. So, yeah. And I think that, you know, the idea is that the church, what I found at least is that if, you know, churches or maybe Christian families might feel like if they're supporting single parents, that somehow they're condoning yes. divorce and that there couldn't be anything further from the truth. It would be no less than, you know, a hospital that treats malaria saying that they condone and suggest that people get malaria. It's more, yeah. it's more about walking with people in that situation. And I think, mm-hmm. I, I mean, it is the simple things that make a big difference to a single parent's life. I'm sure that you could echo that, you know, I mean, just like giving someone a couple hours break or carpooling or picking up groceries or mowing the lawn or painting the house or fixing the plumbing. It's these little things that we as single parents don't want to ask for because it's it's embarrassing. But honestly, it would make a huge difference in our lives. Huge difference. I remember moving to LA and, and kind of taking a risk to start a new career out here. Um, and just not having anything. And the Saddleback Church, Rick Warren and, mm-hmm. and his whole team over there was just so gracious. And um, a guy uh, named Rick Muchow had a single mother's ministry for giving away um, cars yeah. to single moms. And I'm telling you, that that little car that he gave to me that they weren't using, it got me on my feet. And I was able to end up having a successful career in, in L.A. because I was able to drive around and do what I needed to do. So. Yeah, you take for granted the simple things like that, that that are actually like lifelines to a single parent. Lifelines, yeah. Well, I think it's amazing that you've come out on the other side. You're married now and, and have started putting things together. Life is always messy, as we know. Um, what what did you carry forward from your single parent days that, that uh, kind of shaped your worldview now that you are in a, in a married home? Um, it's I think when you walk through something difficult and, you know, and not just single parenting, but anything that's difficult. I mean, you just develop an empathy for people that are struggling or um, dealing with, you know, different various circumstances. And I, I have that. I, I am just, I'm pro single parent. I, any place that I can feel a need for someone going through that, I just, I try to put the pieces together and get people on board to help, um, that it's it's changed my life and it's changed the way I'm able to relate to, to others and be effective and helpful in, in my community of people. So it it was definitely, I mean, when you're in those times and when you are struggling, I I never thought I would see the other side. Yeah. I thought this is terrible. I it was a test of my faith, constant praying that, you know, the finances would come in. It was it wasn't easy and um I, but, you know, I, I can't believe even now, like, I'm just so appreciative of that struggle. Yeah. It really shaped who I am and how I parent and how I'm a friend to others. Interesting. Yeah, how you're a friend to others. It's the uh, idea of experiencing what someone else has experienced, like Second Corinthians 1 talks about comforting people with the comfort that we've received. Yeah. Uh, is a really powerful testament uh, for anyone who's been through a difficult season of life. I was reading about your book and the devotion that you that you wrote, and it had several different taglines that, that you had sort of highlighted about what that book offers to a reader. And one of them really got my attention. I'm going to just sort of paraphrase it to you and ask what what that means uh, for the reader. Discovering that your baggage can become a source of your greatest joy. What do you, that's a really great quote. What does that mean? Well, I think, um, for me personally, through the years, people would ask me questions about my life and kind of refer to my situation as baggage. And that, that was difficult in and of itself. I think, um, to see it as, you know, here, here she is, this girl, 
if we're going to date her, she's got baggage, you know, she's got this history. There was this kind of, again, another stigma with, with being a mom and having kids. And, um, I just, I never saw it as, as baggage in my life. There was just so much joy wrapped up into being a mom and having my children and something that could have been viewed as, you know, too much baggage, too difficult, um, really was a a joyful situation. It was, there was so much love and light in it. And that's what I try to tell people like this baggage you think you, you have is really going to be the greatest source of joy that you'll ever experience. Yeah. See, that sounds like Jesus to me. When, when you come through the other side of a, of a very traumatic experience, uh, through suffering, and then you come out of the other side and you go, well, that actually became the source then of great joy for me. That is really the gospel. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what Jesus offers us. He doesn't offer us, uh, you know, a free pass so that we, ha- we get to get out of our problem or we get to avoid the issues in our life. But he does offer to take whatever we give him and redeem it mm. and Absolutely. To make it into something beautiful. That's awesome. Absolutely. It's incredible because, you know, those things that were meant to destroy you and and take down your world. I mean, as cliche as it sounds, when you do hand it over to God and you do trust in him and um, give him all of your situation, like he really can turn something that was meant to destroy you and make it your, your story and make it so incredibly beautiful. It, it's really true. And it's not like, sometimes I feel like I'm just spouting from the mouth, but I'm not like really by trusting in the Lord, he, he can take this situation and give you this incredible, you know, happy ending story. That's not always happy as you're, you know, even me now, like I wrote this book and, you know, I'm not coming from a point where like I got married, everything is great. It's perfect. (laughs) My life is just smooth sailing because it's, it's always work. A situation in, you know, the, what a seemingly perfect, you know, married household is work. Everything is, is, is something that you have to work towards and you have to trust, continue to trust God even now in my life when I, you know, have a situation that's a little better than it was. You know, I, what I hear from you is something that I, I've encountered as well. And that is, you know, as a church, sometimes we run from brokenness or we try to fix brokenness. I actually came to understand that brokenness is actually kind of the pathway to finding wholeness and um, embracing the brokenness, embracing what you're, you know, you call the, the, the baggage or the, the, the challenges. Um, there, there can't, there can't be resurrection unless, unless there's death. There can't be redemption unless there's destruction. And so we try to move past the dark so quickly that sometimes we, we lose what's in it. And I can tell from, just this brief conversation that what you encountered in those times and the joy that you found in your daughter or your <clears throat> his daughter, right? Uh, daughter. Yes. Okay. Um, not only carried you through, but gave you a change of perspective. And I think that's the, that's the amazing thing about the gospel is that um, he does not only take our ashes and turns them into something beautiful, but it, it, it's like a new life. It's like a complete different vantage point that you wouldn't have had had you not gone through that. And so I guess what I'm kind of getting at here is so many people might be in a, in a place, whether they're going through a divorce or just a difficult time in their marriage, um, it's important to pay attention to what God is teaching us in that place rather than just how can I get through this? How can I get on the other side of this? Yes, yeah. it's true. We want encouragement to know that there's something on the other side. But holy cow, there's a lot to learn in the middle of it, right? Oh, that's where the good stuff happens. Yeah. I mean, that's where transformation happens. Yes. When you're on that journey, I, you, you, some day you just wake up and you're on the other side, but it's, it's all about what you're learning through it and how it's, it's growing and refining you. Those are invaluable times. So all the, um, this is kind of not to put you on the spot, but you know, you've been a single mom You've had a successful career in the, in the Christian music industry and even outside the Christian music industry. You're now married again. You've got an you know, 18-year-old and all the way down to a three-year-old. Um, if there was a theme to what God has showed you about your life and being a parent or just being you know, a, a person, what would, you, what would you say that 
that was? What was what's the constant theme that God has taught you about who you are as a parent or who you are as a spouse? Oh, who I am as a parent. I would tell you what, I'm I'm kind of in the middle of the the hard time again right now. My mm-hmm. daughter just moved out five days ago. Wow. And I'm like, and here I am on a parenting podcast trying to navigate a new situation <laughs> for my life. But it's honestly like learning to trust God with my children is hmm. is a a thing that I'm I've struggled with because sometimes I just want to be wrapped up in every situation with them. And especially now that my daughter has left the nest, you know, earlier than I ever expected. Yeah. She just turned 18 a couple months ago. And so she didn't really want to kind of follow the family rules right now. And, Mm. and that's, that's really tough. And what's been tough is to kind of, you know, allow her to go be an adult, but also cut off some of the provision that we had when she lived at home and, you know, the tough love situation. It's, it's not, it's not easy. I want to just, make life totally easy for her. But, you know, navigating through now this, this adult, adult teenager time, I'm telling you, it's learning to trust that, that God has got my kids. I think that's so important. And I, I can completely, I had exactly the same situation when my oldest turned 18, you know, and you make rules like this is the family rules. And if you don't want to live by these, then you can you're an adult, you can go live somewhere else. And, and yeah. when they actually go, okay, <laughs> go live somewhere else, you're like, yeah. oh, crap, I oh. actually have to follow through with this. And, I know, uh, I wasn't ready for it. I said, right. well, she, we found out she was in a, a compromising situation. I mm. said, you know, you know what we believe and, and you know what you have to do when you're living here. And um, I said, you know, we're not kicking you out because we would never do that. We, we don't want to do that. But... You have, you have some choices to make in this situation and what you want to do. And by staying here under our roof, we can't condone certain things. And she said, well, bye. <laughs> so, yeah. And so you're so right. Trusting God. I'm, I'm bawling. You know, like, oh, my baby's gone. Yeah. My baby's gone. But. I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> I, I didn't have any of these problems. You never I, had that, did no, you? No, man. I just dropped my kids off at church. For an hour every week. They popped week, out and normal they, and they everything's just, perfect. They started reciting the Lord's Prayer and uh, <laughs> healing, you know. Yeah, so here's the truth. I'm just kidding to our audience who don't. I wrote a book called Road Trip to Redemption. And the reason I'm on this podcast is because I did everything wrong as a father uh, that you can possibly do. And God still reached out and touched my kids despite me. Um, and I, as I'm listening to you, Nikki, and I'm listening to Robert, I know his story very well. You know, there are parents, there are moms right now listening who are just devastated. They're experiencing something very similar, uh, where they have done what they thought was the right thing and it doesn't feel like it's working. Um, and there's such doubt and despair and, uh, discouragement that can grow in our heart because we we can't see anything right now. There's just no fruit at all to that. Um, would that describe some of how you're feeling, Nikki? Absolutely. I I just question like how did it how did it get to this point? You know, I felt yeah. like I had read the parenting books and. I tried to establish boundaries for my kids and and be the best that I could be within all of that. And that we're still, you know, at a place of struggling. And she is. And, you know, I couldn't protect my daughter from everything. She didn't have her birth dad in her life, you know, her entire life. And so there were times that I, I felt bad and blamed myself for um, the choices I'd made and maybe the, the hardships she had to go through. And so with when this is happening now, you know, I sit and question what I did and, and what could I have done differently. And, um, you know, you had asked earlier what your favorite quote was. And mine was is from Maya Angelou's, had I had known better, I would have done better. <laughs> and, uh, That's so good. I, yeah, I and I feel like that for me. You know, there were so many ways that I really just did my best. And, and I know that I, I sit here today, even with all the conflict and the situations that I'm going to have to walk through this next couple of years, I know I did my best. I know it wasn't perfect, 
but I know God is good. And I know that I can, I can trust him right now. And I'm going to see, you know, this turn out to be something great. I just know it. There's too many positive seeds that have been planted in my daughter's life. And I think for other parents out there, it's just not to be too hard on yourself. We're all, we're all human Mm -hmm. and we're all still trying to figure things out and uh, do the best we can in raising another human full of, of complications and their own story and their own thoughts. And, you know, it's, it's not easy, but you know, I just, I think I would just encourage them by saying just to continue to just trust God and have faith. And as simple as that sounds, it really can change the situation. I think it's, that's beautiful. And, and also it's not up, it's not entirely up to us. I know that, you know, I had that same situation with my daughter at 18 and it's come like 180 degrees from where it was. And you know what? It had nothing to do with me, like in the immediate, I'm yeah. sure the, the, the foundational stuff. Yes. But I'm saying so often as parents, we feel like we're the ones that have to compel our kids to, to follow the straight and narrow or make the right choices or whatever. And sometimes yeah. they need to learn from other people or even themselves. And so um, releasing the fact that we may not be the teacher of all to our kids is a really hard thing to do, but um, exactly. So God uses everything. He really does. And sometimes it's not yeah. our, our particular voices that they want to hear right exactly. now. Yeah. Um, but I do, I do trust that God will bring those people around her. Yeah, so let me speak into that just a little bit as uh, a father who's been down the road you're on um, in in very, very similar pattern. Um, the one thing that, that David wrote that just resonated as you were speaking in my mind, and I'm going to share it with you and the listeners in our audience, that even though my heart condemns me, you are greater than my heart. And I think for a mother... There are moments, I think for fathers, there are moments where we carry all of that on us. We think everything falls one way or another off of us. And I just want to speak truth to that and tell you that that's not the case. The truth is that God is faithful and he may actually be working more in their life right now than he's ever worked before. And as parents, we have to wait for that to be evident. We can't see it in the moment, but we can believe in faith that what God is up to is better than anything we could have done. Um, yeah. And I, I, I'm speaking from practical, painful truth. I had a daughter who left the faith in her second, third year of college and sort of ran off with a young man and and had the whole experience of being pregnant outside of wedlock, and I'm a pastor. And so I saw tremendous suffering in our home between my wife and I, and, and just a tremendous amount of guilt and pain that occurred. And within six months of that experience, my daughter became a genuine believer in Christ, was married, and now we have this amazing son-in-law and, and an beautiful grandson, and they're active and sincerely involved in the local church. And I had nothing to do with it. (laughs) So I want to give you that testimony of encouragement. That's a sincere, like when I tell you I understand, I understand what you just talked about. And Robert could tell you stories as well. And if we had time, I if would. We had, if we had time. And so the point I want to just throw out there, there's no perfect family, and there is no perfect outcome to parenting, but there is a perfect God that we can entrust our kids to. Mm. Yep. Amen to that. And as a result of that, um, not only brings us to a wholeness, but I don't know about you, Nikki, but having gone through what I've gone through, I'm a better Robert than I ever like imagined and a more integrated Robert. And I'm not bragging because I'm still, there's, I'm very acquainted with all the ways I fail, but through the hardship, we come out the other side, not only whole, but a, a better person than we thought we were capable of being. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's been, it's been all of the, the life struggles that have made me who I am in, in parenting all my children and being a wife and a friend. It, um, hmm. 
has definitely shaped me to be something better than I could have imagined. Not that I'm not, I'm not sounded, <laughs> I'm better. No, than I get it. I get it. You I think our mean? listeners do too. <laughs> yeah. So for those of you listening, uh, we've been talking with Nikki Leonte Edgar, and she has a tremendous testimony of God's faithfulness in the past in her life as a single mom who God redeemed and restored that relationship. And now God is going to do it again. We just don't know part two yet of the story. Um, and she's written a book that is from the real part of her heart called All Things Beautiful, 31 Devotions for Single Moms. Nikki, do you have any parting thoughts for our audience? Um, I would just say, you know, if you're a single parent out there and you're struggling in any way, that um, just just to hold on, hold on, find a, a solid community of people that um, – can be there for you that you can confide in, even if maybe you've had some church hurts or or things that have um, dr- driven a wedge between you and community and finding your people that um, just to continue to not give up to um, develop solid relationships. And I think I say that in my book too, just kind of finding that community is, is honestly key to being able to um, to bounce things off of people and to grow and, and isolating yourself and trying to do everything alone will make life so much harder. So um, just go out and, and continue to try to, to bridge, you know, the gap and make connections and, you know, continue to, to trust in God in your situation and know that he's, he's got you, he's got your kids, that he, he truly does care about all the details of your, your life and your parenting and your struggles. And, um, yeah, God has just been really good to me. Well, thank you so much for being a part of this. I, I'm, you're inspiring and I'm just, um, I'm reminded of just the, the faithfulness of God and the lessons that, that I've learned. And I'm sure that's an encouragement to those that are out there that, um, that are single parents and also those that are not single parents that, cause we all have dark days and we all have difficult things and to, the lesson of trusting God in the midst of it is is an important one to learn and and um, incredibly rewarding. So, thank you, Nikki, for taking time out and uh, really appreciate it. Thank you both. I just wanted to say I really appreciate what you guys are doing and um, the voice that you have to other people and and to other single parents. It it's so needed right now, and I just wanted to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for making a difference. Awesome. Well, thank awesome. you so much. Goodbye. God bless. What our kids believe is going to define them for a lifetime. According to George Barna, by the age of 13, what a kid believes is what he'll die believing. For parents and for pastors, that's a frightening experience, especially if you've got an 11 or 12 year old. At the iShine Ministries headquarters, this became a huge priority in the last year. We partnered with the Tween Gospel Alliance to bring you a brand new resource known as the Shock and Awe Study Guide. And I'm here with one of the co-founders of this entire program, Robert Beeson. Can you tell us what is the Shock and Awe Study Guide? It is awesome. More than that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> The Shock and Awe Study Guide is a super cool thing that either a parent can do with their kid or a youth pastor can do with their students or a children's pastor can do with their students. And here's the cool thing about it. It is apologetics for kids. So it's the really huge evidence and thoughts of apologetics wrapped in a way that is really tangible and simple for kids to understand, answering four primary questions. And they are, what if there's a God? What if the Bible is true? What if Jesus is who he said he was? And what if I'm part of that plan? And we believe if you can answer those four questions and you are drawn through evidence proving those four questions that really it's going to it's going to establish a pretty unshakable foundation of faith that sounds very helpful especially if you're a parent or pastor and you're concerned about the condition of your child's faith what they believe what the voices of culture are telling them if that's you and you're interested go to ishinelive.com and check out in our web store the shock and awe study guide it has a digital cloud video base so it's four studies in a small paperback volume for nine dollars and it has four videos that go with four studies it can be done in a weekend it can be done over a month or it can be done bi-monthly however you need it it is a fantastic resource that i have used as a pastor in my own home church and i have been impressed so check it out check it out
Well, Robert, that was a sort of a poignant uh, interview there mm-hmm. with Nikki Leonte. I I could tell as you were talking that you were reliving some things there. Yeah, I mean, it's I get I get the I get the honor of like talking about this a lot, and so it you know ignites something in me when I'm able to talk to someone that's walked there and is on the other side of it, but still kind of going, okay, wow, there's some residual stuff that I still need to deal with. Um, mm-hmm. So I, what I appreciate about her is just her authenticity, and I'm confident. I think it's the one thing that really happens for single parents if they let it. Is you know you embrace the brokenness and you stop trying to portray yourself as having it all together, and you start trusting that God is in the process. He's not just in the results, and so um, I think it was interesting as she's talking about her um, 18 year old daughter, like going. I kind of seen this movie before as far as God providing a way through. Um, it doesn't make it easy, but it's just, okay, this is another facet of that trust muscle that I need to continue to work. And so it was just very encouraging. And I, and I think a lot of people are going to get hope out of that because she's not glossing over anything. Mm-hmm. She's she's basically saying there's there's beauty in the overall story, even if the immediate struggle is real. Yeah, that... It's one thing to talk about it in um, <clears throat> sort of a, a, a past context where you're looking over your shoulder at the, the distant history of your life and say, man, God really showed up in that. It's another thing to actually have the courage to talk about it in real time, mm-hmm. um, to actually say, I'm struggling with this, but I'm going to stand with the things that I have believed in and I'm going to trust God like I've told other people to trust God uh, in the middle of this. And I, I know for you and I, this is the fifth season of our podcast, there have been things going on in our personal lives, in our homes with our kids, uh, in real time while we were doing this podcast that left us feeling completely inadequate. Yeah, or like I'm not qualified to get up on any mic and talk oh, about absolutely. anything with any authority because this part of my life is in shambles. Yeah. Who am I mm-hmm. right. to dispense advice or, or anything uh, of any substance to someone else when I have all these issues in my own home? And uh, the part I want to encourage people with is that you may be, as a parent, given opportunities to encourage and support and even guide other people. And there will be a, an attack of sorts spiritually on you and your confidence that you aren't adequate for mm-hmm. that. You could be a pastor, you could be a youth leader, you could just be a mentor. And I think it's really important that we unmask that attack for what it is and that our faith is in Christ. And so we're simply sharing messages, we're simply illustrating the point that God can work in any messy situation. That's right. That's right. And the Bible, in case you're not aware, is full of stories of people just like us who had messy lives. Murderers, drunkards, like you name it. Prostitutes, um, (laughs) you know, who became great, great grandparents of Christ, the Holy One. Uh, So you you cannot read scripture without getting the the theme of redemption as Mm. a primary thought process. And so uh, as Nikki was talking and I felt sort of what she was going through, I was reliving my own experiences. I was so encouraged that she had the strength and the the faith to step up and say, you know, even though this is happening to me, I'm still going to say God's going to work in this. She said, embracing the brokenness allows us to experience the holiness or the wholeness of God. You said that. And then she responded and said, in the middle of struggling, that's where the good stuff happens. Hmm. It's so true. Oh my gosh, it's so true. Um, so as a, just a wrap up, I, I want to thank uh, Nikki for being so courageous and being on our show. And I want to thank you, Robert, for starting Solo Parent Society. I think for people who are listening, they're trying to figure out how do I reach out to single parents? What do I do if I'm a pastor? How do I provide for their needs in our church? Where would they go to find out how to start a solo parent chapter in their church? Soloparentsociety.com. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's been our pleasure and privilege to share this with you. And uh, we hope you come back next week to be a part of the Brilliantly Brave Parenting Podcast. Be encouraged, parents. You are not alone. In Paul's letter to his son in the faith, Timothy, he writes, But I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed 
and I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Brilliantly Brave Parenting wants to be an encouragement and support that parents can rely on. Would you consider liking us and sharing us with a friend? As a part of the Tween Gospel Alliance, we are a nonprofit organization dependent on the support of friends like you. Thanks for stopping by. We'll be right here next week. Well, we're very excited to announce a partnership with the guys that we know from Boise, Idaho, Robert. Yes, we are. New release today. They're fantastic. Very, very relevant for what's going on. If you want to discover new music in the Christian realm, that's kind of the only place to go. Yeah, and not only do they have amazing music and amazing reviews and just a lot of information about Christian artists, but they are creating with us a brand new devotional product. Call it IRL Resources. Do you know what that stands for, Brad? I found out. You did? What does it stand for? It stands for In Real Life. That's exactly right, Brad. Very good. In Real Life, because a lot of times we have these standard devotionals that you know that, that we see, and, and we thought that it would be kind of cool to use their expertise in Christian music, couple that with actual scriptural and devotional thought that digs you deeper, not only into the song, but incorporates it into real life. And so it's a very vibrant and very awesome resource for families and for pastors. Yeah, and so if you uh, have a preteen or a teen in your home and you're looking for a new devotional to do weekly, we have a digital subscription online at IRLresources.com. It's very inexpensive. The first study is free to check it out. There's nothing to lose. You should go there and see what's the latest thing in Christian devotional. Absolutely. You won't regret it. iShine is a faith-based ministry and media company that looks and feels a lot like a Christian version of Disney. iShine is more than entertainment. We're the producer of the largest Christian tween TV series in the world, a nationally syndicated radio show, a Nashville-based record label, host to multiple live tours and summer festivals, an interactive website and social media, and a provider of printed and digital devotionals, preteen Bibles, and church curriculums. But more than anything, we're a trusted Christian resource for parents and pastors. You can turn to us for all things to Check us out at iShineLive.com.